watering plants. We know that that's your habit. Okay, so um, tonight the topic is balance. Um, so why do we? Why do I think that it's such an important topic? Why is balance in Aikido for me a really core theme? So for, please feel free to open your mics up and offer some contributions there. You don't want me to do all the hard work, surely? But do you do you mean balance in a sort of warm, welcoming club with a good, healthy atmosphere? Okay, so that's one of the things we need to maybe t t tick off. What do we mean by balance in Aikido? I think what you're talking about very much fits the picture. If, if um, there's something wrong with the club, then it's out of whack. It's not in balance and uh, you're not going to get the results you want. It was quite interesting today um, on um, Facebook. I posted the session about Aikido and politics and one person kind of visited, oh, whatever next, Aikido in politics. And I said, well, politics is in everything. <laughs> it's on the mat, it's off the mat, it's everywhere. Um, and if we had a bit more Aiki, because he said he wanted a bit more Aiki, get on with practicing Aiki, then we'd, we'd, we'd all be a lot happier. And then somebody came in and said, well, we don't have any trouble in our club. There's no politics there. And my comment was, well, no, you do have politics. It's, you just got it right. And that's why you don't have any hassle, because everybody's happy there. Doesn't mean to say you, you didn't make some political decisions about how you ran the club that meant it was a happy home. Or so just I, walking around with their eyes closed. Yeah, yeah. Precisely the opposite. It could be no politics because you're killed or tortured if you express divergent opinions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's possibly true, but then whoever does the killing is making a political decision that anybody opens their mouth gets killed. And but that then, probably doesn't make for a happy place. No, nobody's talked about happiness. You're just talking about balance. I am talking about balance. So when you're out of balance, how do you feel? What goes on in your body, Paul? Yeah, believe me, I, I certainly do know. <laughs> You're committed to one thing as opposed to something else. You can't get a proper spread of awareness or, or action. Okay, but it, it, it kind of your point is, well, what's happiness got to do with balance? So I think actually coming back to your perennial response, which would be well, what's going on in your body exactly. when you're, you're sensing something that you might call balance. Would you care to offer something yeah. there? Yeah, when I center and balance the tremors stop or s slow down. Right. And do you prefer to be centered and balanced or otherwise? Centered well, and balanced. Right. It, it's much less hassle and much more efficient. Yep. So but it's also oh, work. On an emotional state, how does that leave you feeling when you are when you achieve a sense of balance and center? This, this is the emotional state, this feeling of flow and, and calmness. There are other emotions. It's nice to be excited about something as well. Right. But there's always still that, that center, that place that you know where you're coming from. Yeah. See, I can talk mystical. <laughs> but I can talk through the body if I have to. <laughs> um, so... It, it is, it is a something that uh, I think we strive for in our practice. What, but I come back to my original question then, um, and then perhaps we can come back to the question of definition, or perhaps we should tackle that first. What do we mean by balance in relation to Aikido? Is it just a bodily state? I think it starts with the body state. Right. Yeah. And, um, and of course, as, as Paul said already, in, there is of course always an, an emotional interpretation of being in balance or out of balance. Sure. And, um, um, and astonishingly, I, th I think uh, when we uh, humans walk, we can always only walk if we lose balance and regain it and lose it and regain it. So in a way, we are stumbling in a controlled way when we walk. That sounds like a good description of humanity, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> so when we are in balance, what's going on in our bodies, Thomas? 
what sort of are we doing in our bodies to feel imbalance? When do you notice that you're not? Uh, I'm, I would um, I would take it as a metaphor firstly. So if, if I hear this word, this concept, this metaphor balance, I relax. Yeah? So it's a re relaxing feeling. So I, I, do, I don't need uh, any effort or, or additional uh, power whatsoever, muscle power or emotional power or mental power or whatsoever. So balance means um, it, it just going s smoothly. Yeah, in, inside here or outside with the body. So that, that's for me, that's balance. I think one way to think about it, the word Gleichgewicht, that's yeah. very literal, equal yeah. weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the word that comes up for me that's very linked to it would be alignment as well. So, you know, if I walk along my head down, um, I would say, Oh, David's shaking his head. So we're definitely coming back to him in a second. I think you know, we do need to use our physical structure as it's designed to be used most efficiently, which means that your head is supported by your neck, which is supported by your shoulders and your spine and your hips and your legs and all the way down to the ankles. If you bring any of those bits of body out of alignment, then suddenly you feel out of balance. Is that an unreasonable statement? Yes, it is unreasonable. My experience is that when, the, when my medications aren't in, in, in effect. I curl up, but I haven't, I haven't fallen twice in 18 years. So there's a way of finding balance of awareness, even when the body itself is not in that vertical alignment. Okay, so when you curl up, are you in movement? Yeah, please, you may, may, uh, sorry, may I add yes. uh, a point? Uh, I mean, this is, this is for me, this is due to the fact that we are two-legged animals. So if we were four-legged animals or six or eight, uh, then it wouldn't matter anyway how, how you bend your head. Uh, you won't lose uh, balance or you won't be unaligned or so. And okay. it's really due to our architecture, the, the skeleton we, we have. Yeah, well, I totally agree with that. Bit. And I said, actually, using your body in the way it was designed to be used. So of course, uh, uh, the balance as interpreted by a four-legged creature would be a very different thing. Um, and also, of course, there is a range. So when we walk, in your own words, you kind of lose balance to gain balance to lose balance, but you're still in control. You're not out of control. It's within the range of losing balance that really doesn't, you don't notice. And equally, I can put my head down and I don't really feel I'm just about to fall over. But if you do that for 40 years, you end up with a curved spine and, and your head forward and you don't have the muscle strength and that's when you start falling all over the place. If you, don't, have, if oh, you oh, don't, have, don't do that. If you don't have the awareness to balance out the deviations and still maintain an average vertical. Yeah. David, you're shaking your head, so I'm interested to know why you're shaking your um, head. I'm shaking your head for, for a number of reasons. I think, um, well, align, yeah, alignment, you could be, your, your, your alignment of your body, your center, of, your center of gravity changes depending on what you're doing. So if you think about Aikido, your center of gravity is moving all the time. Sometimes the gravity is actually outside your, your base of support and, and, and naturally so. So, and alignment, what do you mean by alignment? Alignment of the spine, alignment of the legs, alignment of the pelvis, hips, you know, they, they, we play with these things all the time. And, um, um, and you know, so balance is, and also if you were just purely in balance at all the time, then you'd be, you could argue you just stopped and going nowhere. So you need to move away from being in balance to do something. So you might move, you'd, you'd shift one side or the other. You talk about walking is effective, could be classified as controlled, control falling. But when you're doing that, you're adjusting all the time. And, and you also made a point there that if you bent your head forward for 40 years, you would be stumbling all over the place. And that's not actually true. You might not be moving efficiently and you might be causing massive damage to the rest of your body, but you'd still be able to walk. You wouldn't probably fall over because you've learned how to adapt. So we're very adaptable. We're a very adaptable species and we, we adjust for all sorts of particular things. So so I think there's um, there's a difference between alignment and balance. There's a different different things, but I think one of your good questions is how do you how do you notice balance in your body? I think that's a great thing to focus on. 
Right. Well, I, 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 of course, they're different. They're they're closely related, but they are they are different. They're subtly different. We can talk about being centered. That's also closely related to balance and alignment, but it's it's different. I would say. And I bet you, if we did a scientific study on those people who tend to walk with their head down, uh, and yes, of course, they adjust. But I bet you, in their old age, they they're the ones that fall over and get damaged much more readily than the people who who had good posture throughout their life. I can't prove it, but I, I'm nigh on certain that's the case. Um, anyway, we, we need to move on. <laughs> but a, a, a nice point coming out of that, David, is, uh, well, balance doesn't mean we want to be static all the time, does it? You know, otherwise, where do we go in life if we're just standing there in beautiful alignment, feeling beautifully balanced? We don't achieve anything. So in many ways, we need to come out of balance to grow, don't we? To, to be able to cope and adjust with those uh, experiences that are were are a little bit beyond us. Yep, you need to yeah to grow. You need to do you'll need to do something. So all, all in some cases all things are moving away from balance, and it's a question of how far do you want to become unbalanced. And going back to the felon felon thing is 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 your is your thing reversible? Can you, so can you do it and stay within control? Is one way of looking at it. So are you in you know equilibrium, stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, or not moving? Yeah, I think that's not a moving physically impossible. Yeah, that's a wonderful way of uh, defining within a range of movement that you can reverse. I think that if you go beyond that, then you fall over. So yeah, that's a wonderful way of uh, testing the theory. But equally, if I if I hold my uh, my arm up in front of my center line and someone tests me tests me here to push it out of my uh, one one misalignment, they're going to struggle to do it. But if I bring it out a bit, I know they'll find it a lot easier. I can still hold my arm here fairly easily, but I'll get quite different results when I'm tested. So there's a range that I can do, but then there's the place that I'm I'm best and most powerful. Yeah. yeah. Which is to do with body mechanics and all sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 using the system as effectively as you can that achieves the best sense of balance, power, alignment, centeredness. All of those things are in, interlinked, I, I would suggest. Why is it important? Why do we want to have balance though for a lot of the time? Why do we always need to return to a state of balance? Or don't we? Well, I would say that the body works at its best potential if we have balance and alignment. Um, and also I wanted to add to what, um, adding to what already Thomas and David were talking about, about centering and alignment and uh, regaining the center again, losing it and regain it. I remember very well in one of uh, last Osensei's writings, when he was asked about his center, he was saying that I keep losing my center all the time. I just regain it very fast. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's the case. That's the way Thomas mentioned when you're working, it's the same sure. thing. You gain it very fast. But I think we need to differentiate between surviving balance and between Perf allowing the body to perform at its best. Yes. Linda. Uh, yeah. Um, I, the, for me, the reason balance is important physically is it just takes so much less effort. If we're in balance, we're able to to be there without a whole lot of effort if we're not there's there's got to be tension and pulling and cool. correcting and so the the better we can stay in that balance zone the easier everything is the more relaxed we can be i think that directly relates to what demetrius just said that we are most of we we operate most effectively when we're acting from a position of balance i want to come back to what you said thomas you said it starts with the body does it have to And may I uh, may I go into the remark of uh, of Linda? Of course. Yeah, uh, I think that um, that the unbalancing is always there. So if if we just stand on our two feet, and we just stand, I mean, you you can see somehow I'm standing here, yeah, but I'm always losing and regaining balance. There is no way um, to do it otherwise. There is no way to stay in balance 
for a longer time. As soon as I'm in balance, I lose it. And then I regain it, and then I lose it, and regain it, and I lose it. So it's a very ongoing. As long as I'm living, I'm always losing balance and regaining it. So it's a game somehow. Yeah? And of course, we, we are not aware of that. But uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm doing this kind of uh, breathing exercise you, you all know, uh, just standing there, uh, widen, widen up the arms there, and closing your eyes and try to relax the muscles, and then you feel how you swing around the point where you are in balance. And the very moment you think, I am, you're, you're gone, you're out of balance. Yeah? And I think the, uh, this um, metaphor, this image we have with this, um, with this balance is that we can stay in balance all over the time without any interruption going out out of balance. And this is, I think, an illusion. It's not, it's not only body-wise. I mean, body-wise, it's I think it's obvious, but it's also the other way. So also in, in our emotional life, we are always losing and regaining um, kind of balance. So okay, if we accept that, Thomas, well, I'm I'm gonna let it pass. I'm not sure I consistently lose balance as soon as I've regained it, but within a range, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. David agrees with you, and he, he studied Feldenkrais, so I'll bow to his wisdom. Um, why then do I, in Aikido, do we make it such a focus? What's the difference between an Aikido community where we really pay attention to this stuff and everybody else? And how, how can we benefit from that focus? Shall I answer? I asked the question. Okay, good. I mean, if um, for me, it, it's so that uh, immediately when I'm offering an open space for for Uke, so Uke is is going to um, to um, approach the attack to this open space. It's a way of that I'm promising. Okay, I lose now balance. Okay, therefore he's he or she is attacking me. It's you you drag in okay into into you, and then I regain my balance at least when I get in body contact with okay. Okay, but in this very moment, okay loses balance. So it's also for me this exchange of losing regaining balance uh, together with okay, and it's always the opposite. So if Uke is losing balance, I get it. If I lose it, Uke is getting that. And, and my thing in IQ, if I'm on the Tori part, is to, to initiate this always so that the Uke is not in control that I lose balance. So I'm in control of losing balance and regaining it and not Uke. Yeah. So this is Aikido technical wise. Well, I think that's a really uh, nice way of putting it because we always offer a risk, don't we? Or, or we open up to that they think they can attack this side or that side. So I, I get entirely what you're, you're, you're saying. Um, perhaps the difference between us then and uh, the average Joe that doesn't think about these things or the average Joanna uh, would be that we have this greater awareness that that's the case. And that gives us some control that others don't always have. Is that a fair statement? Otherwise, why do we why do we say that balance is important in Aikido if we can't ever achieve it because we're constantly losing it? What's the point of studying it, Joanna? Well, um, I was thinking that maybe it has to do with David and probably Thomas maybe also Linda, it's kind of, uh, to be in balance, we need to keep moving always. So for me, at least, I always learn, okay, get back to balance. And then I, I come back to my center point and then I'm paralyzed at that. But not, it's just a continuous movement. So it, it could be a, a, some contradiction over that, but how do we move in ju just a very tiny little off and on balancing again 
that by the time the whole movement in, in uh, Randori practice, we are more in balance than more out of balance. And, uh, and also another thing for me that is crucial about that is the, is the emotional balance because you, just, mostly in the randori. So I might have a perfectly um, body balance, just like musculature balance, but if my emotions are not in balance, that's a mess. <laughs> that's a huge mess. I don't know. No, well, well said. Like, well said. I, I'm a bit worried about Linda wandering around like the Grim Reaper with that. But sickle that she seems to have but we'll let that pass oh my god she's brought it back <laughs> um, it's been balanced <laughs> I would like to take that uh, but true. that comes back to my question Thomas so you said it starts with the fig the physical and my question is does it have to because uh, Joanna's just introduced the fact that the mind plays an incredible incredibly important part in in what balance means to me anyway yeah. So for, for me, um, mentality or cognition or what, what, however we, we call it, is for me always part of the body. So it's not something outside of the body. It's also a, a bodily activity in the neural networks we do have here. Yep. Okay. But of course, the, um, the, these activities can be um, firstly triggered by external sensoric input. So, okay, is la uh, launching an attack towards me. Okay, so I, I see that, maybe I feel it. Um, and, and the other one is that we have also sensors inside of our body. So this one, and we do have sensors also here above. Yeah. So there are neurons which read out neurons. Yeah? And this may be what we call um, mentality or so. So we have somehow an idea who we are, what we are thinking about right now. Yeah? What problems do we have we would like to solve and so on. And for, for this, we, we use our body experiences um, to apply that there. So it's, so it's a, a two-sided thing, the body and, and mentality, and it changes and they're influencing each another. So if I'm mentally out of balance, maybe if I stand up from my chair, I stumble. So it has a body effect. Yeah? And if I stumble bodily, I may be confused in my mind the very moment I'm stumbling. Yeah? So they are not so... Um, distinguish two parts, they are intertwined with each another. So clearly you and Paul have been talking, which is why I've got him top left in my screen and you top right, keep you separated. Paul. I would like to suggest that a lot of it is vocabulary. If you have emotional balance or imbalance, physical balance or imbalance, the third thing you can talk about is awareness. And if you're, if you're I would think of balance as first being in, in Aikido's first thing, the ability to be aware, more or less equally, more or less around you and in you, so that you're present that way. That will pr produce as much emotional and physical balance as we're capable of at any moment. The other thing that you have to distinguish between is the awareness of your awareness and the scientific awareness of the neurons. I've never actually seen a neuron, I can't feel them. So that type of discourse is really on a very different level in the level of experience. Interestingly, neuroscience is showing that uh, you know, cells in your brain react to what's going on in front of you from somebody else's brain. So I, I can't see that, but it's been scientifically proven that sure. there is an impact. That's why I say it's a different level of discourse. Sure, I, I, mean, but, I mean, if we think about this just on day-to-day -day experience, you walk into a room and right. uh, somebody's really upset you feel it. It kind of pollutes the atmosphere and affects you, doesn't it? Equally, if you walk into a room and somebody's up for it, that too sort of raises the game for everybody else. Not necessarily. That's the function of awareness. If you're aware of the effect of the incoming data, information, feeling, you can have some control over it. I, I'm, I, I would say to you, Paul, that obviously awareness, you identify the reason why you feel a bit happier or a bit worse. 
and some people are not, not just not aware. It doesn't mean to say they're not affected by it. Right. But I'm saying that if you if you're not aware, you don't have the capacity to change certain things easily. Which That's why we're doing it Nike, though, I believe. Exactly. You just answered the question. That's why we practice it, because we're more aware that it's a useful state to be in and we can be more effective when we, we find balance. Also, awareness is something that has been cultivated. It can be cultivated. You can also lose it and regain it very fast. For example, when sometimes when we lose awareness. Okay. Uh, I, I'm totally with you. So why, why is awareness a useful skill? When what does awareness to bring? Awareness brings a whole, a deeper understanding of the person that is in front of you, where they stand, and the space that is around them, and how you and the, this person are involved in this space and being aware of what is happening all around. Okay. So okay. I think also like center, sometimes, depending also on our training, we tend to lose awareness and regain it. Yeah. Um, sometimes very fast or it can take longer, but the more practice someone has, the, the faster you can regain awareness when you lose it. Sure, I, I agree with that. I, I think awareness, relaxation, groundedness, uh, relaxation, all of those are things that if you have one of them, you tend to have the other three and you can focus on any one at any particular time. And of course you can immediately use it. But simply put, uh, Demetri, awareness brings knowledge. And with knowledge- Not necessarily. It depends what you're aware of. I can be aware of pain and, and sadness and go nowhere with that awareness. That's it's still, which, I, aware, I, I, which awareness you cultivate. It brings, it brings knowledge, Paul. Whether you do anything about it is another matter, but it still brings knowledge. It brings information in. Not necessarily. People can use awareness to keep information out. They can focus their awareness on one part of the body in order not to feel. Okay, but that, that, then they're, 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 they're doing that because in their mind, that is a, a, a good solution to a particular problem they're facing. Now, they yes, might be wrong true. about that, but they're still using their awareness to make the judgment that blocking all this other stuff out is a good plan. Quentin, can I just uh, throw something else into the equation? It wouldn't be right if you didn't, Hugh. And that, <laughs> that, that is that the discussion so far seems to have been focused very much on the balance of oneself. But from an Aikido point of view, in order to execute a good technique, the first rule is to break the balance of uke. Of course. So we, 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 we have a system of deliberately, without necessarily understanding the importance of our own balance, we do know about the importance of breaking the balance of the attacker okay. or your training partner. True. So there was a deliberate plan in this session, which is to move from the self to now you're working with somebody else and what does balance mean there? I'm going to nuance what you said and say, well, are we seeking to break their balance or are we showing our partner that what their actions lead to their own imbalance? No, it's too quick. Get, get Thomas talking about the martial moment. It's all too quick. <laughs> there's, no, there's no time to explain to the uh, UK what's going on. No, no, there is no time. But my, the point is, I don't think it's about us. Uh, trying to do something to the partner. It's about leading this input of energy from the partner to show them that it leads to imbalance and ultimately a fall. It's a subtle difference, but I think it's an important one. Yeah, I mean, the, the technique is executed. That, that lesson that you've described there uh, dawns on oneself after the class is over, I think. Sure, we spend many years doing it to people. Yeah. But the, I the idea is not to, that's, that's yeah. all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, so okay, so um, when we're working with a really good UK, sometimes it feels fantastic and sometimes it doesn't feel so great. Has that got anything to do with balance? I can't believe there's not a view on this. I've got Andrew. Andrew, you either you've just frozen or you're shocked into uh, No, I was <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to go back a step and say that really you're looking for balance in the flow of energy in yourself. Uh, I think you, and coming to your point, I think you put your partner in a position of unbalance. 
not not that you're trying to break their balance, but you are directing them into a position where they're not balanced. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it kind of does. Except I'm, I, I, I come back to the the fact that it's it's not my intention to unbalance someone. It is my intention to show them that the result of their negative energy is imbalance. Yes, because it's not a fight. It's not a contest. So, yeah. So I was talking with uh, Joanna the other day, and I, I was saying the uke nage role is is very much two sides of the same coin. So for much of the technique, it's kind of like you're one beast as opposed to you know, two separate entities, if, if it goes really well. <laughs> it feels to me that there's a great sense of balance when you're practicing with somebody where you, you manage to cultivate that feeling. Is that not right? Yep. Do anyone else have a view on that? Molly? Yeah. Uh, You're good yeah. with that too. I I uh, I feel like when I'm training in Aikido, I'm actually inviting my partner to experience losing their balance and recovering it in a safe, protected way. Um, and this is a is a physical thing that goes on, but it to me it it definitely hits the spirit, if you will, it hits the emotional body, if you will. And, you know, like I say, I'm, it's an invitation and we have an agreement. I will invite. And as the, you know, as the attack comes, the imbalance is, is experienced there. And if I'm adept to meet that imbalance, um, it imparts something to the human being that uh, doesn't happen when you're blocking and and you know uh, stopping things from going on. There's just a, a beautiful liquid flow yeah. in balance and imbalance. And you know we're on this spinning ball that wobbles. We're constantly. Uh, our bodies are constantly adjusting without our, you know, total awareness. We're constantly adjusting to input from just the planet itself in the way that it's structured. And, you know, we're sticking out on this ball. Oh, grandson. <laughs> he felt strongly about that, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. So, that, I mean, um, one of the things that Kathy said last week was that, um, you know, it was really important to find embodiment within self, but then she expanded it to uh, uh, embodiment with others and a community, and then she expanded it to the world and then the universe. Uh, and and I, I think, you know, what she was pointing out is in, in her way was there is an imbalance in the world. You know, we're out of whack in terms of, the, you know, I, um, the way we we operate in society, COVID's I think made that brought that message home quite strongly. People are suddenly finding a bit more balance in their lives because they see a bit more of their family now. Um, environmentally, you know, we're, we're we're just out of whack there, and there's a lot of work to be done to get us back in whack. Is that related to Aikido at all? For me, it is. What do others feel? Yes. Do you want to expand on that? Well, <laughs> well since I, I, I gather it was a farmer, I've been doing organic gardening for as long as I've been doing Aikido, about 50 years. And I feel very much the same when I'm working in the earth, when the ticks don't give me Lyme disease, that is. But uh, there's a feeling of participating with the attacker and caring for him and keeping him from being hurt if you can. There's a, there's a sense of participating in the earth that awareness makes me feel part of things, not separate from it. Yes. So it comes back, actually, we're cultivating balance, which also cultivates awareness. And with awareness, we can notice things out of balance beyond just the mat. Yes. Out of balance in, in relationships or in our lives. I mean, surely one of the things we all should be striving for is, is a balance in our life. So what does that mean for you guys? finding a balance in your life? 
or balance in your life would be um, you've got influences that affect you. And in order for you not to collapse or fall or get injured, you have to counterbalance. So it's not that I'm straight and always aligned in myself. I'm in relation to what's happening around me in balance. Sure. Which is basically a keto technique. You're something's happening to you and you are balancing with that situation. And you're not necessarily aligned within yourself at all moments when you're doing that. Same with the world around you and what's happening around you, the relationships. You're not centered in yourself, but you're balanced with your partner, balanced with the world around you, balanced with society. Yeah, I, 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 I think that that's all true. We talk about uh, work-life balance, right? And and uh, so, so that an awareness that you know, working sixteen-hour days, five days a week, never seeing your family, maybe, you know, that's that that would be good to be aware that that's probably not healthy. Um, so for me, balance in my life means I find space for me, I find space for my family. I find space for to, 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 to run my business and, and, and look after the clients that I'm supposed to be serving. And if any of those things fall out of kilter, if I work too hard, the other two suffer. If I don't actually find some space for me to actually occasionally go fishing or play golf, I don't feel happy and then the other two suffer. Uh, if I don't look after my family, uh, I'm, I'm spending too much time you know, looking after myself I know I'm going to suffer. <laughs> I will get it in the neck at some point that I, I've, I've, I've overstretched the boundaries. And one of the things about Aikido has, has taught me actually is that if I spend too much time trying to be on the mat, uh, that means that usually I, 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 I get it in the neck. And I always have this very, because uh, Alison's not a fan of Aikido, there's always this tension that I have to get the balance right and not do it too much to be in balance in my family life. And I think Aikido helps me be aware of that. No, but balance also means that sometimes you have to um, be overbalanced in one area temporarily, and then you come back and you counterbalance, and that's the process. Yes, you're right. And believe me, of course, I have overstepped the boundaries on quite a few occasions, usually in, usually doing too much Aikido or, or working, not, not, not working too hard, I never work too hard. But yes, being aware that I'm doing that and coming back is part of the learning process. Well, well that's balance in itself. That's what balance is. Balance is being in an extreme and then coming back to center and then going to the other extreme, like the pendulum. I don't think we necessarily have to go to the extremes, but because yeah, usually that's quite a harsh lesson to learn if you, you take it too far. It's better if you can be aware that you're out of balance when you're just a, you, you, the thing begins to tip in the wrong direction. Then you can put things right much easier. But in reality, that doesn't happen. I'm watching David's hands acting like a pendulum there. I'm sure he's got something deep and meaningful to say. Well, uh, not necessarily deep, deep meaningful, but just a just a point. I mean, we, you say in Aikido, um, balance. You know, we really focus on on balance. But do you think about any? Um, most arts, most um, disciplines, you know, footballers, you know, you can recognize George Best, Messi, Maradona, great balance, the great tennis players all have great balance, the golfers, anybody who's using their body is interested in, in their balance because one of the things that we said earlier on, why would you, why do you want to have good balance? Because you have more efficient, easier, best tra better transmission of force if you know what you're doing, going back to the awareness sort of thing. So all of these things are are interesting. Uh, I think Paul talked about Gleitkovic, so equal equal weight. But but if you think about your Aikido life, maybe your Aikido life is eighty percent of your life is Aikido, five percent for your, your wife, five percent for your work. Is that out of balance? In balance, it might not be. It might be fine. You, you've got a, a, a balance that doesn't have to be equally weighted. It could be yeah. inappropriately or, or, or uh, different or different balance to somebody else, and absolutely. you, you should be quite happy. So it's whether those those levels are a level that you're happy with that, that gives you some joy and doesn't create too much grief and then if you think financially you might have a, a financial portfolio where you've got you know you don't want everything in cash but you might want some in stocks and shares but it'll, it'll change and it'll something will do really well when do you when do you want to rebalance if you rebalance too early then you might miss out on great gains 
if you rebalance too late, you might miss, you might have some big losses. So there's always this um, act that we have to play sure, between sure. ourselves. And Aikido might teach us some really good lessons about balance, but but as would as would most things, whether it's have you put too much flour in your Yorkshire pudding mix? Have you have you you know put too many swear words in your in your language? You know, everything's all about balance. So I don't think Aikido is unique in that, but it is an important part of the, doing good Aikido. You, you make everything. you make some great points. Um, and I, I balance is in everything. Remember, for me, Aikido, word, life, they're synonymous. So, of course, you're going to find it in everything else. Um, and understanding the system might determine whether it's 80% play and 5% family and 15% business. If the system allows that and that's when everybody's happiest, brilliant. Uh, but so there's a, the balance doesn't mean 50 50, it's, it's what's appropriate for what's going on in any particular situation. I think if we, if we talk to Jamie, she'll, she, she, as a golf coach, she'll say uh, that m many of the people that she trains have no idea of how to be in balance when, when striking a ball. And that's actually her skill, teaching them to find us and to find it and to show them how they can be so much more powerful when they do it. So the great sportsmen, whether they're coached by someone like Jamie who brings it to their attention and they cultivate that skill or they just have it naturally, I don't know, but you're absolutely right. The greatest in anything usually have, are really well balanced in the way they're using their system for the art or uh, thing that they're doing. Jamie, did you have a thought? Yeah, a few thoughts. I've been listening in, of course. Great to see everybody. Um, yeah, I jotted down a couple notes just on that uh, as far as, you know, when I think about golfers, to me, the biggest difference between pros and amateurs is balance. Um, you know, you never see a pro or watch them on TV, you know, you never see them like falling away from the ball, or, you know, they may be a little tiny bit off in the ball, but they're in balance. I mean, that's the biggest thing. And, um, so that's, yeah, absolutely, uh, really important. If you think about extreme athletes, I, I just finished uh, writing this whole thing about balance in my book, but, um, extreme sports, right? So that's extreme. You're on one end, you're doing some extreme stuff, but boy, are those guys balanced? You know, I think about these guys flipping and on landing and sticking their landings. They're doing extreme things, but they are balanced within extremity. So, you know, that's that's a possibility, which leads me to the point about I think it's so much about our inner balance. And what we learned in Aikido to me is that we're, you know, we're getting off balance, right? Uh, but when you're being outwardly off balance, can you keep your inner balance? And that is the challenge. Um, and I think that, you know, I mean, if you think about UKs who don't have their inner balance, they're the ones who hurt you, you know, they're leaning on you, they're falling all over the place. And the thing that we wanna learn is how to maintain our inner balance, even when we're off balanced outwardly, which is essentially what we're all doing during COVID, right? Um, <clears throat> if you think about it that way. So I think that that's really an important thing is this uh, matter of internal balance. And then we start getting into centering and, you know, all kinds of stuff, but that's really what we're training. Uh, Mary Heine said something really interesting last weekend. Um, there was a conversation with uh, Jan Velius that I got to hear part of. Anyways, one of the things she said is this idea of Kazushi, you know, we break their balance, break their balance. And that actually turn it around and think of it this way. They're unbalanced. They broke the harmony of the universe because they've attacked and what we want to do in our loving protection and the way that we deal with them is to help restore, help Uke restore their balance. So yeah, we break their balance so we can throw them kind of thing. On the other hand, think of it the other way around. It's really pretty interesting that uh, what we're really trying to do is to help others restore their balance when they're off balance. And, you know, that's so much our job. That's your job if you're, you know, I don't know, a, a psychologist, you know, social worker, whatever, um, a leader is uh, is doing that another thing is i just want to mention about um um balance is everywhere and our world is just out of balance uh, we need balance in our ecosystems eco diversity and and balance and without that we're in big trouble so um you know the i think the biggest issue in our world is how unbalanced we are and how unable to integrate opposites and uh, polarities and, you know, find the harmony and diversity and, and the unity and all of that um, doesn't mean we're all the same, but it means that there is some kind of a balance that we can have and that we can even have balance when we're, when we're not right in the middle. You don't have to just be in the middle of that balance. You could be over here and have balance, right? That's important. 
So this, this whole notion of um, maintaining our inner balance, and that's up to each one of us, and it requires training and awareness, but that's really up to each one of us, I think. So how much has Aikido informed that understanding of the importance of balance in other aspects of life, Jamie? So do you think you would have come to the same conclusions if you hadn't studied Aikido, if you just stuck to the golf, say, where you, you'd have great balance because you're a great golfer? You know, I might have gotten it through golf, but I think it bears bringing out, articulating. <laughs> and so most golf pros aren't doing that. Most people aren't doing that. And um, that's one thing that we do, excuse me, we do in Aikido, and I'd like to see us do it even more in Aikido as instructors or as practitioners. I think it's really a very, very important notion. And it's got a lot of aspects to it, as we're discussing. Um, but I think that we need to be conscious of it. And once we are, then that's a whole new story. Um, you know, last Saturday, I taught a seminar for um, Brian Levy's um, NOLA Aikido, his, his seminar series. And um, it was really interesting. I did, you know, martial fitness and weapons and weird and all this good stuff. And I had this balance board that I got from tennis pros about, gosh, 10, 15 years ago. A bunch of you have seen it. I've carried them to Israel in different places. But, you know, I just spent about five minutes showing the balance board and some things with that. And what it does is it allows us to be centered to move, uh, to train proper sequencing of balance and sequencing of movement from the lower to the upper body. If we're only upper body, we fall right out of balance. I mean, if you ski and you put your pole first instead of your feet and then your pole, you fall down. Um, and so uh, it was really interesting. I mean, just, I think maybe I did three minutes or something with the balance board and uh, people are on it. I mean, it just, it captivates everybody. And I think it's, and it, rightly so, we need balance and we need a way to train it and from the ground up. In many ways, I would say that that is exactly what we're training, isn't it? You know, we talk about grounding, we talk about being centered with a view to being in balance so that we can operate effectively. So maybe some people- well, it, it, I mean, I, the centers, it's like the sun in the middle of the solar system. If it wasn't steady in the middle, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? Um, <laughs> the balance of the planets orbiting would would not be maintained and so you know it, it wouldn't work Every, you know, the system needs a center and then it or it, like the a, a hub uh, the spokes in your uh, sure. wheel you know you can't roll down the road if it's imbalanced and the tire pressure's off and the spokes aren't right and the center isn't yeah. solid Absolutely. that's what we do yeah yeah and we uh, that's a really nice way of putting it and you it's thinking more of center than balance but they're so closely related for me when we're practicing with one or more people, so it could be Randori, we want to be at the center of the system, controlling it, not being controlled by it. And if we're not in the center, in balance with the whole system, that's when we get overwhelmed. Is that not right? Well, other elements are involved uh, in that case, uh, Quentin, because with balance, other elements in, that are needed are distance and timing. Uh, distance, balance, and timing are all required to commit sure. to good technique. But but isn't isn't it because you're aware of the distance and the timing that you're able to stay in balance? The balance is the goal, but cultivating skills of estimating distance and timing is what allows you to achieve the goal. Yeah. Yes, agreed. I look, I look at it differently, if I could. Good. Uh, a key, most, in most martial arts, in most sports, there is a fear of not being in balance. You know, the object of boxing is to stay on your feet. The ob object of basketball is to stay upright. The only martial art that embraces falling down and completely giving up is Aikido. And I think that teaches you to, you can completely give up your balance and still be um, able to function. And it teaches you humility. It also teaches you that to some extent, balance has to be subconscious. You can't always be in control of it. You have to let yourself be put into balance. And yes. I think so we cultivate this, you know. we, we cultivate this, this idea that we have Uke and they're going to give a bit of themselves up to Tori. And they know that if Tori gets it right, they're going to end up falling on the floor. So you're absolutely right. We, we, we're prepared to go out of balance, but we also cultivate skills of teaching people to roll 
so that they will be able to get back into balance as smoothly and efficiently as possible. And we teach them to keep getting up as well, and it's addressing the problem rather than collapsing. And it's all on a, a subconscious level to a certain extent that you don't have to think about being balanced all the time. You can just relax and be in balance. Because you know you have the skills to get back there to yeah. some degree. Yeah. I, I think this goes again, um, like Errol, to the maintaining inner balance when outwardly off balance. And you know what I mean is like you can do a sacrifice throw. So, um, but you're in balance when you do that, when you fall down, you know? Um, or I mean, I'm having images of like a baseball player who like reaches their, their glow out and they manage to catch this ball. And you know, they're like, oh, they're, um, they're not just right here, but somehow they got some inner balance to be able to do that. Or the football player was like way up here, or the basketball player. Um, I mean, you know, it's not, it's like the extreme athletes. It's not like you just stay right here. I mean, you can be all kinds of places, but you've got some inner balance. And I think that that's training. And I think those are people who have a presence within themselves and a possession of themselves and a consciousness. And it's not perfect. It can't be perfect, but you know, um, it's, uh, you're basically there, you get off, you can come back, you know, you're off and um, it's, you know, you lose it, right? We all lose it, but it's like, how much do we lose it? And how long does it take us to get it back? Sure. And, and that, that is our, our, our uh, ground, you know, that's, that's, that's where we start from, or that's where we basically mostly are. And, I've certainly found it's important, you know, in, in all aspects of life, um, you know, to, to have that. And I think that's the training basically is so that we walk around pretty much, you know, present and balanced. Jamie, quick question that's just sprung to mind. When you had your bike accident, sure, there was a nasty consequence to that, but would it have been much worse if you hadn't trained in Aikido? You know, that's a really interesting question. Every, I, can, I, I was very conscious, I remember the whole thing in a certain way, I was like, as I was flying over the handlebars, I did not feel like, oh my God, I, I didn't feel like that. I knew exactly what was happening and I landed. And yeah, I hit right here and I got this injury, but I didn't get a whole bunch of other ones. And um, and I really was kind of just like this in the middle of the air as I, and I landed. I didn't feel that I got all like that. Um, and I do know, I'm, I'm sure that I maintained a certain inner balance during the whole emergency and the surgery and the whole bit. I mean, I just, I did. And that's what got me through it. I mean, I, uh, you know, I had moments when I wanted to panic or whatever, but it's just not so much where I went, um, which was interesting to me, I think. And it was not that I was, well, I, I partly did it consciously, but it was also training was there. Sure. And that's why we train. So it's there, you know, it's just kind of there when we need it um, and we can call it up a little more, but there should be a certain amount of that automatically because we've trained ourselves to be there, to be like that. And that's what it's, that's what it is. Yeah, thank you. Vitali, are you able to open up your mic? So sure. uh, we're talking about balance. So you were able-bodied and now you find yourself not as able-bodied as you were. What does, what does balance mean for you now? Okay, actually, uh, that's what I wanted to say at the end, that actually, because uh, of my status at my MS, because uh, part of my illness is absence of balance. And every time I'm struggling, all the time, I'm struggling to get balance back in every move I make. And when you lose your physical balance and right now for example i working i put a lot of mindfulness in in all movements i do whenever there's something unbalanced i understand that i'm gonna lose it right now and so it's very important in everything every aspect of your life sure. even uh, movements of people around or any subjects not in the place where i, I get used uh, to see them that's also get, get me off balance. Do you think, so I can see that you, you really have to be terribly aware of your physical balance and you're working really hard at that. But I wonder if you've compensated a little bit with mental balance to the adjustment in your life because you're so positive about what you do. 
to sort of deal with the issue and take things forward, not just thinking about yourself, but thinking of others in your situation. Do you think that's a result of it, that you kind of comp compensate with a, this greater balance in, in your life mentally? Yeah, I think so. It helps me a lot. Like uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback, and it, yeah, I would agree. Molly, do you have a view definitely on that? so? Sorry, uh, I, I, I can... just said to Molly, did she have a view on that? Um, wow. From the get go, uh, you know, I'm I'm grateful that. Uh, I had 11 years of training as a typically abled student. Um, it kept me alive in the car upside down for you know almost two hours. And uh, I drew on all of that, um, you know, everything from the art and, you know, the sense of the entire community there with me, right? Um, that's balance. Um, and, and moving through the world in a seated position most of the time. Um, now, if I'm in my power chair, balance is one thing, but if I'm in my manual chair, balance is like a really critical, really critical piece. So on the mat, I've only um, flipped over backwards on the mat, maybe a half a dozen times totally. Uh, there's a balance that I have to, to pick up. There's a way that I have to move when I'm taking ukemi that keeps me in the chair and not flying out of the chair. Um, and just to collect my body to move with my hands, wheels to move upgrade, downgrade, round corners, all those kinds of things. There's a, there's a kind of a collection um, of balance and an awareness. Mm. I mean, if I'm cruising down a street, um, I'll see a piece of glass, talk awareness. I'll see a nail. I see my field of, of vision of expression is huge mm. because since I'm kind of like this is when I'm on a horse. If I'm on a horse, I'm not interested in coming off the horse. If I'm in my chair, I'm not interested in coming out of it unexpectedly. Uh, and so the, the field of awareness just gets really broad. And with training partners, um, you know, if somebody's coming direct in and they're, the blend for me has to be there, or it's, I started to say ass over tea kettle, it, you know, it's that I'm flying out one way or the other. And, um, and so there's a, no, over the years, it's a really fine-tuned connection, sure. and it starts before I'm ever touched. Yes. Mm. Uh, Vitaly, Jamie's asked you a question. Do you want to respond to that? Or do you want to first, do Jamie? Do you want to vocalize it so that everybody who didn't see the chat knows what you asked, and then, then Vitaly, if you want to respond. Yeah. Yeah, I... Vitaly, I was well. Just for everybody, I was asking if. Um, if you would t share with us more about what's your experience kind of internally or energetically of um, balance, uh, uh, what that's like, how difficult is it when you don't have the corresponding muscular ability for balance. And in fact, your muscles are causing you to be physically out of balance. What's that like to have an internal and, or energetic balance and how difficult is that without the, the physical part? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain uh, until you feel that. When you, it's really hard hard to explain. But uh, you just start understanding when you don't. I don't know how to to explain it actually when you. One of the interesting yeah, things that you've, when I, you've taken my class, you say, well, can you tell me what you're doing energetically? Because that's what you, I mean, you can't do the physical movements I'm doing. So it's important for you to understand what I'm doing energetically. That seems to be related to what Jamie's asking. You've got this awareness of that. And that, that helps you, doesn't it? Yeah. 
it helps a lot and especially now because I practice more and more in that and I'm putting like all my energy uh, all the flow of the energy in everything I do right now and whatever I'm trying to do sure. it's really hard and sometimes whenever you lose the sense and that feeling and you you start feeling you uh, that you're losing all the balancing in your body and it's hard to regain it really hard to regain it back mm. and it's you know it just it comes naturally, I would say, when you start thinking about that. So you have to imagine every move you make. You you have to to realize and map every step you make, every time. Just that that the only way for me to to move somewhere. So I have to imagine that way to map it and then start moving. So you got the the negativity. And this is open to, to, to Molly and to Judith if she wants to respond. You've got this negative pull of uh, you know, what's going on with your bodies and it not doing what you, you were used to it doing. And yet, it, and, you've got, and that would be very easy to let that affect your mental state. You've said that that's effectively one and the same system. You know, so the one affects the other and vice versa. So you must have to really work hard at, at, at not being feeling bad about that and, and being positive, or or does it just does it kick into gear? What, what how does that work? <laughs> it's never actually. Uh, I never felt any any like I I was sorry that it happened to me that I feel this way, but I it's never influenced me. So I would be like, okay, that's the end of my life. No. That's just a different life. Right. Yeah, so we have to spend our life doing some helping other people who are in the same situation. They're just sitting down, they decided that, okay, that's the end. I can't do anything else. We can do some different stuff. We can help some other people. And whenever you, like, I remember the time when I worked uh, as a counselor in Texas, in Texas Lions Camp, and there was a, a great saying: "It doesn't matter what uh, what house you lived in, what account you had, but what difference you made in the life of a child." And it's the same. It's uh, I maybe I'm physically like. Uh, I've got some borders and I can't can't do some stuff, but I still can think, I can talk, I I can maybe inspire some people to do something. And for example, right now we're trying to pull all the people with disabilities, with disabilities as we agreed to call it now. Uh, I love that phrase. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And to, we are trying to pull people out of their apartments and it's really hard to do it in Russia, especially because we don't have a lot of facilities over here. And for a long of time, people were just left where they were. And so you can breathe, you can eat, you sit there, that's enjoy what you have. That's all you can get. And uh, right now uh, we just, uh, I like I was saying many times that if I manage to get one person to get out of their shell where they sit and they start doing something, they start at least speaking to me. Because some people just don't want to discuss anything. They just, okay, we don't want it. We don't want that. We don't. Want... And you start speaking. It's just the only way to, to get to somebody to speak to them. Molly, were you going to say just bitter or did you want to add something else? No. I was just, you know, thinking, um, you know, I've been in this body's uh, ability for almost 26 years now. And um, every once in a while, and it usually happens when I am observing some incredible ukemi, there will be this little sad, this little piece that... I feel run through my my body, uh, my mind, my body, everything. And there, there's a in a moment, there's just a, a slight contraction in my being because there's a I I miss hugely that aspect 
of, uh, of movement. But in general, um, you know, it's all, life is only different. Um, uh, and life is rich for me, really, with people and activities and all those kinds of things. And I, I may have said this before, but in growing up, my, uh, my father was the head of the Optimist Club. <laughs> so I grew up with this and I, there was in the, in the hallway, there was this placard with the creed of all the optimistic, you know, things. And that was like, how many times did I read that? And it, uh, I sort of like, I wear it in my cells, you know, it's kind of like in my DNA in a certain way. It reminds um, me of what David said earlier on about balance doesn't necessarily mean 50-50. Ah. You just have to understand the system. You've both found balance within the system in which you operate. And that's yeah. why we all love and love respect you both. Yeah. Judith, Judith, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to... Oh, go on, yeah. Vitaly. Judith, you will, if you yeah. want to unmute and say something, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. But Vitaly, fill the space while she decides whether she wants to do that. Okay. I, I, I just wanted to add... I feel sorry for sometimes when I feel really sorry when I see perfect, uh, for example, some personality is getting perfect condition, can do anything he wants, but he doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> That's when I feel sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can, I can. You get the whole world, you can <laughs> do anything you want, but you don't want it. Yep. There's a few of them around. <laughs> yeah I just wanted to throw in the image of a teeter-totter you know um, when you you can put three small children on one end and an adult on the other there's balance so it's just you know it's mm. not this 50-50 thing sure yeah. Thomas you're not always with us I'm just wondering what you've made of all of this has it gone in the direction you expected <laughs> And are there anything that you would like to see discussed? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, um, um, most of that, what, what others talked about is a, is a personal experience um, about this metaphor of balance in, in this individual life. And, uh, and this is always very interesting to see how others cope with the uncertainties um, we, uh, we are confronted with um, and um, how, how to get, um, get the, um, the strength that you can uh, overcome uh, hits which life gave to you. And, um, and of, uh, I would agree with, uh, with uh, Vitaly if if you are in command, in absolute command of your of your body, of your health, of uh, uh, of your life, or so, and and you are not able to to do something uh, which is worth the doing, yeah, then this is really a wasted life, so to say, for me. And um, so, is the conclusion then that? actually it's a necessity to have a good life to push yourself beyond balance in order to grow as i said in the, in the beginning several times for me uh, balance is not a um a status i can gain for a long time i mean i i always have to uh, to gain it and lose it gain it and lose it and and Immediately, when I'm trying to um, to keep in balance all of the time, I need so much energy in in doing in trying to do that, and I will fail. Certainly, I will fail. So, as as several of you uh, already said in Aikido, we not only learn the techniques as um, as Tori, but also we learn how um, how to do the techniques of Uke. So this. Ukimi is very important to learn that losing the balance physically 
possibly emotionally or so, is not the end of your life. Uh, you can decide to stand up and go your way. So and you can, yeah, and you can also exchange the rules, uh, the, the roles. So you're not, you're not okay for all your life, hopefully. Right. So if we accept your, 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 your statement that it's really difficult to stay in balance all the time, you're, you're naturally going to lose it very regularly. Yeah. Perhaps I should have rephrased my question then, is it a necessity that we consciously choose to lose our balance, to push our boundaries, to have a meaningful life? Yeah, in a way, yes. In a way, yes, because otherwise we, we won't learn how to live our life. Uh, if you stay always in the same situation, and you don't change anything. I mean, what are you doing? You know? Yes, I think that's a, for me, that's a brilliant end point, but I'm very open to anybody adding anything else to this conversation. I would like to suggest a slogan to live by. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you recognize that you have overdone it and that uh, you know, yeah, right, you've got your price to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask Paul a question, if we could. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and also, Molly, I just want to say, you know, the sisters from another mother, I think from another father, <laughs> the Optimus Club, my dad raised us on PMA all the way, positive mental attitude. <laughs> it was a Dale Carnegie thing. <laughs> uh, very funny. Anyways, um, Paul, I was curious if you would talk a little bit about, um, it, it's, I don't know if it's kind of a corollary, but uh, you know, having um, Parkinson's and shaking, um, what it's like to find stillness or do you feel stillness? And it kind of goes along, I guess, with the question around what's the relationship of our physical and somatic experience with these qualities that we think are so physical, but maybe, you know, there's other dimensions. I've been playing with the transition from hard to soft and notice that there's no tremor when I do this and when I do that. So there's a way of bringing myself into balance. I can do it a lot and then I can't do it a lot, but um, I just, I just, I'm thinking that I'm not trying to balance my body as such. I'm trying to balance my awareness to some extent. And with the awareness, I have a better sense of what I'm doing and what I can do, what I can't do. And uh, what's it like to, to be in my condition? I, I don't know. A, a, couple, a few months ago, when I had the Lyme disease, I had to call some friends to pick me up off the floor. I literally could not get up. I tell that to people and say, that must have been scary. I said, no, it didn't bother me emotionally. After 50 years in the martial arts, yeah, so I couldn't get up. But I, I, I just, I've been thinking about the concept of fighting spirit. In the hard arts, we say that. In the soft arts, we open. And it's the same thing. You don't have to pound yourself to develop fighting spirit. You open to whatever comes your way and you stay open. And we keep putting one foot in front of the other. If you can, put something in front of something, you keep going. Does that answer anything? It, yeah, it answers a lot, thank you. Um, can I ask a little bit more? If we have time, sure. <laughs> uh, so, you know, typically we think about, okay, meditation. Like, do you sit, you know, we sit quiet meditation and let everything be still. And well, if you're tremoring when you're sitting still, not doing all these movements, like what's that like? And um, I mean, the only thing that I can relate to for myself was when my jaws were wired shut and I couldn't breathe very well. And the most I could breathe was kind of through my nose. And I would listen to meditations and they all start with take a deep breath and inhale and, and it'd be like, I can't, you know, that's, it's not happening. Um, and so, well, what do I do? How do I take a deep inner breath? Can I do that? So I, I'm just curious for you about, you know, like silent, still meditation and your tremoring. So if you could talk, uh, share with us about that, I'd be really interested. Actually, my, I, I, I went to my doctor a couple of days ago for this thing that the antibiotics did. Went to my other doctor for the Parkinson's. They invite people and they say, watch. I've gotten to the point where I can still the tremor almost completely as long as I wish, but I don't have the bandwidth to talk and focus outwards and do this. So um, it, when I tremor, I tremor. 
if I'm trying to cook something and I, I found a lot of workarounds, if I hold this and that, you know, normally you do this with both hands. If I hold one thing at the wrong time, this, the food goes flying, I have to catch it with the other hand. But it doesn't as such bother me. I think that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking of as balance. The attitude of awareness and I try to, when I was first diagnosed, I think I've said this to a number of people, my, my practice was Parkinson's. Ah. As soon as I do that, I go back to Parkinson's. Ah. And I, got, I accepted it, not as a mystical thing. I trained my body to not dislike the Parkinson's. I, I tell people it's a great hobby. It's got some advantages. One advantage is nobody can copy my signature, not even me anymore. The other advantage is I meet kind people all over the place. So I, I don't know what to say. It's I, If I tremor, I tremor. But I don't have to dislike the tremor. Oh, and so physical stillness isn't a prerequisite to have stillness, or physical balance isn't a prerequisite to have balance. I don't know. It depends precisely what you mean by balance. I think everything is prerequisite to everything else. <laughs> you should have done everything else first. <laughs> Demetra, did you still have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I was. I just wanted to add that I also believe that it's very crucial to allow ourselves to go off way off the limits and off balance sometimes, and to explore those dimensions of taking risks and being part of life and exploring those fields of being way out of balance. It's very important. It's very enriching, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just, um, when I remember one experience, um, when one time I fell off a horse galloping very fast and it was not expected. It seemed that the horse had an injury and all of a sudden when I was going very fast, it just kneeled down and you can imagine the speed that I went off and um, of course, uh, you have no time to, to, to take, to make any decisions about what you're going to do. Just your autonomous nervous system takes charge of what your body is going to do. And it seems that what also others were saying, your body, the training and the memory in already existing in the body, my body rolled down in a high ukemi from the horse. That helped me a lot not to break my neck so the body memory uh, was there <laughs> and saved my life. <laughs> well, we're very grateful to hear that. And I can see Linda nodding. So she's obviously had similar experiences on her horse. I suspect not just memory. I had I was out jogging or running a few a few months, oh, maybe a year ago. I got my foot stuck in a pothole, which I wasn't aware was there because it was, I was running in the dark and I shouldn't have been. And I pitched forward, I couldn't put my foot out to, to support myself because it was stuck. And somehow my body calculated, I turned sideways and rolled like a log, which I had never done before. Certainly wasn't muscle memory, smarter muscles than I was, but so there's something else going on. I don't know what it is. That's called cool. deep wisdom, that is. Um, okay, um, I, I think that's probably a, a really nice point to leave it on. Um, so it's been, a, for me, it's been a deep and, and a meaningful conversation. So thank you all for your contributions. Um, I'm not sure what we can do next week. Uh, we might have Bob Frager. I might interview him, if it, for those of you who know him. Uh, for those of you who don't, uh, he, he trained with Osensi, so I, I suspect he, he might be an interesting guy to, 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 to hear. Uh, and he's also, I think he's a Sufi. Yes, so yes. I, uh, yes. I think... Uh, talking about spirituality and Aikido might be something that he wants to explore. I also know that he does Tai Chi, Demetra. He's been doing a lot of that over lockdown. So uh, that might come out as well. So over the next few weeks, I, I will arrange a date with him. It might be next week, might be a few on, but just thought- It'd I'd be great to have him. Yeah, I think he'd be good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Thank everyone. you, Quentin. Thank you, everyone. Have a good session.